During the last week, we have spent uh, um, an afternoon and all day with our regional representatives of the Twelve, directing our attention to a theme, the church hath need of every member that all might be edified together. We've developed uh, some statistics that we've now reduced to charts, which the regional representatives will be taking out to your various regional meetings to impress the need for reaching out to those who are presently are not active in the church. I merely take figures from one chart to impress the importance of what we're talking about. In one chart, we had 353 holders of the Melchizedek priesthood in the church, most of whom are fathers, and only 187 are active, using as the criteria an attendance at one sacrament meeting and one priesthood meeting each month as a helpful criteria. Or in other words, they were active if they did that much. Of the 184 men, 184,000 men over 21 who hold the Aaronic priesthood, most of whom are fathers too, only 17,000 are active, mind you. There are also 48,000 adult male members who are unordained, and 117,480 non-member husbands, many of whom are fathers too. Thus, of approximately 700,000 adult males, many of whom are fathers, almost 500,000 of the total are inactive. If we include unordained males and non-member husband in describing the scope of our challenge. Now, brethren, we're going out now with a determined activity to bring these, our brethren, into activity. Activity of some kind. One of our mission presidents uh, was with a group of his missionaries back in the eastern states some years ago. They were meeting in a hall with the pillars that ran down the center of the hall, and he said to one of the missionaries, get up and push that pillar over. Well, said the missionary, I can't. Why? because the weight of that ceiling is all on top of the pillar. Well, he says, suppose that weight were lifted off, could you push the pillar over then? And he said, why, sure, I think I could. Then the president said, now, brethren, you and I are just like one of those pillars. As long as we've got a weight, weight of responsibility in this church, all hell can't push us over. But as soon as that weight is lifted off, most of us are easy marks by the powers that drag us down. Now, we want to put a weight of responsibility on every holder of the priesthood and every father of every home. Because remember, you multiply those who are so-called inactive, who haven't been to the temple, by the average size family, and you're, you're reaching up to uh, hundreds of thousands of members of this church unless we do something about it will not be sealed together in the temples and therefore will not belong together in family relationships after the hereafter. Remember, activity is the soul of spirituality. Now we propose that, that you introduce this kind of a program. We want the bishops uh, now, the home teachers and quorum leaders will submit the names of inactive members to their bishops along with suggestions as to how these individuals might be approached and involved. We want the bishops in turn to submit these names to their stake president in the same manner, so that there is a continuing effort and evaluation over a period of time in which we focus on individuals rather than numbers in which we test our love and creativity in terms of how we can best reach and assist fellow members in giving them the opportunity of serving others. Now, we've had these brethren speak, as they have tonight, directing your attention to this prime subject. All of them now have touched upon various areas. Here we have many professional men who have been asking, why can't we, instead of being called to go out on a proselyting mission, why can't we go on a mission where we can use our talents, our professional skills, in helping the work of the Lord? Now, this is a, a program that we will hear more of, and this is a call to doctors, nurses, agricultural people, and all that Dr. Mason has talked about, that we, we're going to try to marshal and call them as regular missionaries, to go out at their own expense, as all proselyting missionaries do, to give help for a period of time 
in helping to lift the standards of our people wherever that help is needed. Now we can see in this a great uplift and a great surge of strength that will come from many of these now who are asking for somebody to give them a chance to serve in the fields where they are able to serve. So reach out to all of these who are now to some measure less active than they should be and give them something to do. Use your imagination, you leaders, and see that everybody is given some responsibility with a feeling that the church needs them for a specific service. I recall, and I think I've mentioned before, and I repeat it tonight, the experience of the late Adam S. Benyon when he went out to the Utah State Penitentiary. He was bolder than some of us have been when we've gone out there. He engaged them in a conversation. Boys, I'd like to ask you, what happened in your lives that caused you to make the mistakes that brought you here as inmates of the Utah State Penitentiary? Well, after he broke the ice, they gave him one answer. We're here in the state penitentiary because there came a time in our lives when we were made to feel that nobody cared what happened to us. You and I sit here tonight in a comparative measure of security, but the Lord help any one of us if ever we're made to feel in our hearts that nobody cares what happens to us. A father or a mother or a child or one who is not active, who feels that nobody cares. That man or woman is in a dangerous state, and we want you to reach out to all of these and bring them now into a measure of some activity right as soon as you can marshal your forces so to do. I was down in a husband's and wife's meeting in Provo years ago when a lovely sister bore her testimony as to the joy that had come into her home since her husband had become active in the church. She, uh, after she uh, told about the going through the temple uh, with her husband, she told how he'd been inactive, how he'd smoked and hadn't been advanced in the priesthood. And now someone got a hold of him and finally made him ready to receive the priesthood and they'd given him a recommend to go to the temple. And now, after she described that lovely evening, she said, here there's five little girls came in to be sealed to their father and mother. This man of God pronounced them a family for the eternity. And as she finished this story and bore her testimony, she looked over the pulpit and down in front of her where it was her husband. And she seemed to forget that there was anybody there but just the two of them. And she said to him, Daddy, I, I can't say, I can't tell you how happy the girls and I are and how grateful we are for what you've done for us. Because you see, Daddy, except for you who holds the priesthood, neither the children and I can be together as a family in the, in the hereafter. Thank God for our Daddy who holds the key and unlocks the door to an eternal family home. And I could have wished that every careless father in this church could have heard that girl's testimony. Please, we ask you to wake up these fathers now while it is yet day, and while there is time for them to receive their blessings before the darkness comes. That the Lord may help us so to do now and catch the vision and the message which President Tanner and these who have spoken to you tonight have given you a glimpse of what we can do if we'll only exercise the priesthood, which is the power of God through which he works upon men or through men to the salvation of his children that the Lord might help us so to do to catch that vision and to carry out the purposes of what we're trying to do this year. I pray humbly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.